Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences annual pinning ceremony. This ceremony is our opportunity to convey our congratulations to you for your accomplishments to date and to celebrate your transition into the last phase of your education, your senior internship, your field work, and your rotation experiences. These experiences will be wide and varied, but I have no doubt that each one will provide a valuable learning experience for you and allow each of you to demonstrate and hone your knowledge, skills, and educational objectives of your educational, of your individual academic programs. As our college's mission states, we provide an intellectually stimulating learning environment with collaborative learning among students, faculty, and staff. And collaborative learning is not limited to the classroom, and you'll have the opportunity over the next year to participate in that. This evening also serves as a milestone in your journey. In commemoration of reaching this milestone, you've earned the college's pin and a new name tag. The pin is in the shape of a shield, which you see pictured on the screen. It has the name of your degree program, which serves as a reminder of your program's professional values and competencies that you will protect in the future. The line with the Drake D in the center circle serves as a reminder that you are always a representative of the Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. While you are receiving this pin tonight to signify entering into the final phase of your educational journey at Drake, we hope that you will continue to wear this pin with pride following your graduation. This evening also provides an opportunity to recognize individuals from our pharmacy, health sciences, and occupational therapy programs who are the recipients of their program's prestigious awards. I'm pleased to announce two awards from each of our programs. As I read each of the recipients of these awards, I would ask that the individual stand so that we can recognize them. Our first award is the Outstanding Health Sciences Student Award. The student selected to receive this award is a Health Sciences Clinical and Applied Sciences student with a minor in chemistry and plans to pursue a career in medicine. She is a gifted and hardworking student as evidenced by her strong academic performance numerous undergraduate research presentations, competitions and awards, co-curricular involvement including HOSA, Pre-Med Club, CPHS, Student Governance Association, chemistry tutoring and community service experiences with BioLife Plasma Center and Unity Point Hospitals. Please join me in congratulating Mackenzie Temperley, this year's recipient of the Outstanding <laughs> Health Sciences Student Award. The second award this evening is the Health Sciences Student Leadership Award. The student selected to receive this award is a member of Pageant of Hope and has demonstrated leadership as a member of our CPHS Ambassador Program in which she has assisted with many recruiting activities for the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. She's also a member of the Alpha Phi Social Sorority where she serves on several committees and she is the morale captain for the dance marathon and a Group X instructor. Please join me in congratulating Jenna Benke, this year's recipient of Health Sciences Student Leadership Award. Our first award for an occupational therapy student is the Scholastic Achievement Award. Recipients of this award have excelled in their coursework and their academic performances in the top 25% of their class. This year's recipient has, is an enthusiastic learner who keeps an open mind for diverse opportunities to grow. The student consistently displays a unique enthusiasm for scholarship excellence, illustrates the definition of a lifelong learner, and serves as a role model for her peers. I would like to recognize and congratulate this year's Occupational Therapy Scholastic Achievement Award recipient, Emily Stone. The second award this evening for an occupational therapy student is the Leadership and Professional Development Award. 
Recipients of this award demonstrate drive to advance the profession of occupational therapy through leadership opportunities, publications, or involvement in professional presentations. This year's recipient is a leader and an out-of-the-box thinker who is able to apply traditional concepts to emerging areas of practice as exemplified by his efforts to support the involvement of persons with disabilities at the Big Blue Oval Invitational event. Please join me in congratulating this year's Occupational Therapy Leadership and Professional Development Award recipient, Matt Schumick. Our first award for a pharmacy student is the Excellence in Public Health Pharmacy Award. This award was established by the United States Public Health Service to recognize student pharmacists who make significant contributions to public health. This year, the United States Public Health Service has selected a Drake student pharmacist who has a deliberate record of pursuing initiatives and experiences that benefit the public health. For example, this year's recipient has completed two summer tours of duty working with Native American populations as an ensign in the Junior Commissioned Officer Student Training and Externship Program, otherwise known as Junior COSTEP. It is an honor to announce that the 2018-19 U.S. Public Health Service Excellence in Public Health Pharmacy Award recipient is Michelle Lynn. The final award that we, we will be recognizing this evening is the Lawn and Larson Engage Practitioner Award. As you walk through life, each of us has the opportunity to learn from those around us. Many individuals affect the direction of our lives without ever knowing the depth and breadth of their impact. These individuals may impact our lives through their humility, their kindness, their advocacy, their mentorship, their leadership, their challenges, and their friendship. Many of our alumni often use those words to describe the impact that Dr. Larson had on their lives. That is why it's my honor to announce this year's Lon Larson Engaged Practitioner Award recipient. Lon earned his Bachelor of Science degree in pharmacy from Drake in 1972. Upon completing his doctorate at the University of Mississippi, he held positions in the healthcare industry and at the University of Arizona before returning to Drake where he served as a professor of pharmacy until his unfortunate illness and death in 2009. Dr. Larson's professional accomplishments were significant. However, as the award implies, it was his staunch support and advocacy for students and their well-rounded development into engaged practitioners for which he was best known. Established through memorials made in his honor, the annual Larson Award is presented to the student that most demonstrates the values and actions for which Dr. Larson was best known. High ethical standards, reflective practice, innovation, and community service. The recipient will receive a commemorative plaque and financial support to further their professional education and engagement. This year's recipient has displayed the same passion for the profession that Dr. Larson continually conveyed to his students and mentees. This year's recipient has held several leadership roles but excels most as a team member that pushes others to be excellent and gives back to the community by being an engaged citizen. This year's recipient is a member of the Iowa Pharmacy Association, the Student College of Clinical Pharmacy, the Student National Pharmaceutical Association, and Kappa Kappa Gamma Social Fraternity. In addition, this year's recipient has completed the college's Student Leadership Development Series, has served as a court-appointed special advocate at Drake University, has organized opioid epidemic awareness activities, has an impressive record of volunteer work in both the Des Moines community and their hometown of Aurora, Illinois. It gives me great pleasure to announce Gamalchenik Deer Chung to stand as the Lawn and Larson Engaged Practitioner Award recipient. <laughs> Congratulations to all of our recipients. After the ceremony, we would ask that you come to the stage to pick up your awards and for some photos. 
I'd like to now introduce our speaker this evening. The College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has a rich history of students, faculty, and alumni who are transformational leaders. The life and career of Dr. Richard Morrow, who graduated from the MBA program in 1983, was also the Ellis and Nell Levitt Professor Emeritus of Pharmacology, exemplifies transformational leadership. Our college is privileged to offer two awards in his name, one for a faculty member and one for a student member. Dr. Yolanda Griffiths was recognized at Pharmacy and Health Sciences Day as the 2019 faculty recipient of the Richard Morrow Transformational Leadership Award. At this time, I'm pleased to invite Dr. Griffiths to the podium to provide her perspectives on transformational leadership. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Griffiths. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me to speak for a few minutes about transformational leadership. When I attended the American Occupational Therapy Association Academic Leadership Council in April, one of the speakers, Dr. Neil Harvison, spoke about healthcare of the future. And one key point that was emphasized is that health, the healthcare practitioner of the future must be agile, creative, and a problem solver. I believe wholeheartedly the Drake University and the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences has firmly put you on the path to be agile, to be creative, and to be a problem solver effectively on your feet. Now my passion and my advanced certification in, is neuro-linguistic programming. So this leads me to engage you in a brief exercise, if you'd be so patient and kind to engage that with me. So if you would close your eyes for just a moment, envision some of the innovative changes in healthcare five years from now. So what do you see yourself doing successfully in this healthcare arena five years from now? I want you to remember this. Breathe in that feeling of success. Okay, now you can open your eyes. In my perspective, transformational leaders always have a vision and motivate others to pursue this vision with passion and excellence. So the vision for the college, as I remind you, is a diverse community of learners leading the way to a healthy world. So here are five brief thoughts about transformational leadership. One, a true leader is authentic. You need to believe you can lead and you can learn to lead. I'm learning every day, and sometimes the lessons are tough, such as learning to be patient while being pulled in many directions, or learning to listen intentionally. So be present and be authentic. Two, transformational leaders emphasize collaboration when attempting to be innovative with change. It does take a village. Your job as a transformational leader often involves recognizing and releasing human potential. Empowering persons with a sense of co-creation with you, alongside you, sometimes in front of you, proving that they are responsible, and exciting change. As you navigate big changes, celebrate any victory, small or large. So number three, one of the top challenges of a transformational leader is to balance needs of the individual with the bigger picture of the whole. Sometimes it's the whole program, sometimes it's the whole department, or sometimes it's the whole community. I have to consciously stay focused on the vision and the bigger picture when I know that every day I might not be able to please every single individual for what they need from me as a transformational leader. So number four, if you show you care, you can make a difference. Transformational leaders motivate. They help followers stay committed and inspired to achieve their shared vision of something better. So the Drake core values really resonated with me in terms of we're all in this together and generosity of spirit. I see this in departments where team members intentionally do small 
thoughtful things for each other as a caring community or group. Even writing a note on someone's whiteboard validating their efforts or taping a funny note to their door to stay motivated, it makes me feel like I'm working with, a gr with great people and not just a cog in a machine to produce. Number five. One of my favorite books is titled The Soul of a Leader by Margaret Benefield. She says, finding success as a leader is spiritual in nature. One of my personal mentors gave me a magnet when I first became a leader in the American Occupational Therapy Association. I have this magnet in my refrigerator at home so I can be reminded every day. And it says, sometimes you have to take a leap of faith and build your wings on the way down. So my faculty always ask me, you have a plan, right? And persons that know me well understand that I'll go one step further and say, trust me, I always walk in a room with a plan B, a plan C, and a plan D. So once we take the leap, we are going to fly. I may not be taking you in the direction we originally planned, but I won't let you hit the ground. And I have learned that in the end, everything does work out all right. In conclusion, a transformational leader has a vision to assist persons to the next level of excellence. We are on this transformational journey alongside you. And as this evening jumpstarts the next level of your learning and becoming, share our vision and show the world what a Drake student can do. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Griffiths, for your inspirational words as well as all of your transformational leadership that you have demonstrated since joining our Drake faculty. We'll now move in our program to the presentation of our celebratory pins and your new name tags. I'd like to invite Dr. Chuck Phillips, Associate Dean of Curriculum and Assessment, to the podium to announce each student, and in addition, Dr. Cheryl Clark, Assistant Dean of Clinical Affairs, will be presenting you with your new name tags. So it is my honor to uh, introduce each of you to tonight, uh, along with announcing your internship experience, your first rotation, or your first field work experience. Uh, after you receive your pin um, from Dr. Uh, Chestnut, please pin it on yourself uh, to signify your acceptance of the responsibilities required of you during the final stages of your educational program. Uh, in addition to the receipt of your pin, you will also receive a new name tag from Dr. Cheryl Clark, and we would ask that uh, everyone in the audience hold your applause until each group of students has uh, completed um, getting their pins and their name tag. So I'd invite the health science students uh, to please proceed to the stage first. I think it'll be all right. Jenna Banke will be at Iowa Lutheran Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Jessica Bell will be at Unity Point Health in Des Moines Pleasant Street in Des Moines, Iowa. Riley Bertram will be at Blank Children's Hospital in West Des Moines office in West Des Moines, Iowa. Logan Berner will be at Iowa Lutheran Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Jack Borvan will be at Planned Parenthood Rosenfield Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Emily Burrell, Burrell, I'm sorry, will be at Iowa Diabetes Research in West Des Moines, Iowa. Madison Kaufman will be at Drake University Wellness in Des Moines, Iowa. Cheyenne Davis will be at Courage League Sports in West Des Moines, Iowa. Tia Dickens will be at Health Source Chiropractic in West Des Moines, Iowa. Jessica Aim will be at Iowa Lutheran Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Jacob Hardy will be at Select Physical Therapy Altoona in Altoona, Iowa. 
Michael Hawley will be at Iowa Department of Public Health in Des Moines, Iowa. Ellie Jacoby will be at ALS Association Iowa Chapter in West Des Moines, Iowa. Elena Johan Johannik will be at Special Olympics Iowa in Grimes, Iowa. Kelly Crock will be at Prevent Blindness Iowa in Des Moines, Iowa. Seth Kruger will be at Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Des Moines, Iowa. Lauren Lerner will be at Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Des Moines. Olivia Masterson will be at Broadlands Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Shelby Maddox will be at Iowa Diabetes Research in West Des Moines, Iowa. Morgan Matulik will be at Allen College in Waterloo, Iowa. Myrna Mohammed will be at Des Moines University in Des Moines, Iowa. Brenna Malnow will be at Acura Healthcare of Pleasantville in Pleasantville, Iowa. Mercedes Morshing will be at Iowa Department of Public Health in Des Moines. Jenna Mullen will be at Iowa Department of Public Health in Des Moines. Karen Quarna will be at Iowa Office of the State Medical Examiner in Ankeny. Hannah Reese will be at Community Health Partners in West Des Moines, Iowa. Annie Schmitz will be at Des Moines Spine and Sport in Urbandale, Iowa. Nathan Seberg will be at Select Physical Therapy in Des Moines Laurel Street office in Des Moines, Iowa. Madeline Shipley will be at Polk County Department of Public Health in Des Moines, Iowa. Sonia Sowinski will be at Health Source Chiropractic in West Des Moines, Iowa. Kenzie Temperley will be at Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Des Moines. Stephanie Theophilus will be at Unity Point Health, Des Moines Pleasant Street office in Des Moines, Iowa. Isabel Tubbs will be at Select Physical Therapy, Des Moines Laurel Street office in Des Moines, Iowa. Tim Zuhl will be at the Iowa Clinic in West Des Moines, Iowa. Congratulations to you all. Uh, would the Doctor of Occupational Therapy students please come to the podium? Nolan Barth will be at Odom Health and Wellness in Waconia, Minnesota. Carrie Behrens will be at Utah State Hospital in Salt Lake City, Utah. Carolyn Besch will be at Stepping Stone Therapeutic, Hutchinson, Minnesota. McKenna Moth Bothwell will be at Loring Hospital in Sac City, Iowa. Emily Botten will be at Sanford Health USD Medical Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Callie Brown will be at University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics in Iowa City. Rochelle Buchanan will be at Cass County Health System in Atlantic, Iowa. Morgan Bazell will be at St. Mary's Regional Medical Center Rehab Institute in Enid, Oklahoma. Wesley Castro will be at Millennium Therapy in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Callie Dom will be at Mercy One Dubuque Medical Center in Dubuque, Iowa. Hannah Fletchall will be at On With Life in Ankeny, Iowa. Lauren Foldy will be at Mercy One Des Moines, Iowa. 
Rachel Frolsky will be at Select Medical Kids Pediatric Therapy in Ankeny, Iowa. Madeline Hanno will be at Unity Point St. Luke's Sioux City in Sioux City, Iowa. Emily Hawkins will be at Virginia Gay Hospital in Vinton, Iowa. Ben Raby will be at North Kansas City Hospital in North Kansas City, Missouri. Danielle Hubby will be at Mary Greeley Hospital in Ames, Iowa. Reed Heffler will be at Boone County Hospital in Boone, Iowa. Sarah Lafredo will be at Connections Therapy in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Emily Mock will be at Mercy One Rehab Hospital in Clive. Mary O'Boyle will be at Unity Point, Des Moines, in Des Moines, Iowa. Libby Reek will be at Lake Regional Health Systems, Osage Beach, Missouri. Mariah Rowe will be at Mercy One in Newton, Iowa. Sarah Shankerman will be at Floyd County Medical Center in Charles City, Iowa. Matthew Schimmick will be at the VA Central Iowa Healthcare System in Des Moines, Iowa. Felicia Schulte will be at Kinetic Edge in Pella, Iowa. Lindsay Schultz will be at Mary Lanning Healthcare in Hastings, Nebraska. Renee Sokaris will be at Mercy One Waterloo Medical Center in Waterloo, Iowa. Aaron Speth will be at Sacred Heart Health Systems in Pensacola, Florida. Emily Stone will be at Unity Point St. Luke's Hospital in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Christina Weber will be at Ottumwa Regional Health Center in Ottumwa, Iowa. Abigail Willock will be at Mendota Mental Health Institute in Madison, Wisconsin. And Danny Wong will be at Choice Rehab, Fleur Center Wellness and Rehab in Des Moines, Iowa. Congratulations to you all. <clears throat> I now ask the uh, doctor of pharmacy students to come forward. Sharon Abraham will be at Jewel Osco Pharmacy, Wooddale, Illinois. Andrea Aguilar will be at Broadlawns Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Leah Amundsen would be at Iowa Lutheran Hospital Pharmacy in Des Moines, Iowa. Laura Baumgartner will be at Mercy One Des Moines Diabetes and Endocrinology Clinic in Des Moines, Iowa. Nick, Bianchi <laughs> Nick <laughs> Bianchini will be at Unity Point Clinic Internal Medicine in West Des Moines, Iowa. Emily Barakdar will be at Rush Copley Medical Center in Aurora, Illinois. Austin Bolker will be at Unity Point Clinic Internal Medicine, Penn Avenue in Des Moines, Iowa. Allison Brask will be at Blank Children's Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Caitlin Brigan will be at DeGen Berglund Pharmacy in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Kristen Butler will be at Hillside Healthcare Center in Belize at Punta Gorda, Belize. Jessica Kalwertz will be at Yuma Regional Medical Center in Yuma, Arizona. Caitlin Carreal will be at Cass County Memorial Hospital in Atlantic, Iowa. Ryan Sakala will be at Unity Point Clinic Internal Medicine at Lakeview in West Des Moines, Iowa. Michael Chenoweth will be at the Iowa Clinic Drug Information and Iowa Methodist Medical Center in Des Moines. Gamal Chinook Chung will be at the State of Illinois Northern Psychiatric Facilities in Elgin, Illinois. 
Branson Dahl will be at Mayo Clinic Health Systems in Red Wing, Minnesota. Kara Tide will be at Iowa Methodist Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Spencer Endicott will be at Lakes Regional Healthcare Pharmacy at Spirit Lake, Iowa. Molly Everett will be at Jewel Osco Pharmacy in Marionette, Illinois. Madison Fazio will be at Cub Pharmacy in Plymouth, Minnesota. Tom Felker will be at Donlan Pharmacy in Decorah, Iowa. Kendra Ford will be at Publix in Cape Coral, Florida. Ron Franz will be at Methodist West Hospital in West Des Moines, Iowa. Erica Gannon will be at Unity Point Clinic Internal Medicine in West Des Moines, Iowa. Grace Geyser will be at Blank Children's Hospital in Des Moines. Rachel Gadel will be at Marshfield Clinic Eau Claire in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Megan Getzel will be at Hy-Vee Pharmacy Kimberly Road in Davenport, Iowa. Taylor Gorski will be at Aurora Medical Center Summit, Wisconsin. Kara Gotson, Gossen will be in Anchorage Neighborhood Health Center in Anchorage, Alaska. Jenna Green will be going to Primary Healthcare Eastside Clinic in Des Moines. Aaron Haberbin will be at Mercy One West Medical Center in West Des Moines. Taylor Hammond will be at Clark County Hospital in Osceola, Iowa. Hallie Harding will be at Mercy One West Des Moines in West Des Moines, Iowa. Tessa Heitkamp will be at Iowa Pharmacy Association in Des Moines, Iowa. Brianna Honig will be at Hy-Vee Corporate Office in West Des Moines, Iowa. Alicia Hoyt will be at Blackfeet Community Hospital Indian Health Service in Browning, Montana. Robert Jedlicka will be at Primary Health Care in Des Moines, Iowa. Ari Johnson will be at Sacred Heart Hospital in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Cassidy Johnson will be at Cardinal Health Nuclear Pharmacy Services in West Des Moines, Iowa. Josephine Joseph will be at Primary Healthcare Eastside Clinic in Des Moines, Iowa. Carla Kenobi will be at Unity Point Internal Medicine, Penn Avenue in Des Moines, Iowa. Michael Lang will be at the Iowa Poison Control Center in Sioux City, Iowa. Mackenzie Lasnick will be at Guthrie County Hospital in Guthrie Center, Iowa. Sophia Lee will be at Clark County Hospital in Osceola. Paul Lee will be at Rush Copley Medical Center in Aurora, Illinois. Sarah Lestico will be at Primary Healthcare Pharmacy in Des Moines, Iowa. Brett Lentz will be at Providence, Alaska Medical Center in Anchorage, Alaska. Michelle Lynn will be at the Iowa Methodist Medical Center Pharmacy in Des Moines. Alexander Makashevsky will be at Cancer Treatment Centers of America, <laughs> Midwestern Regional Medical Center in Zion, Illinois. Mackenzie McGee will be at Riley Hospital for Children at Indiana University Health in Indianapolis. Mike Manlick will be at Lake Regional Health System in Osage Beach, Missouri. Philip Masters will be at Case Hobb Consulting, West Des Moines, Iowa. Alex McCormick will be at Choctaw Nation Healthcare Center, Indian Health Service in Tallahena, Oklahoma. Gabby McNett will be at Sarasota Memorial Hospital in Sarasota, Florida. Darby Messerschmidt will be at Boone County Hospital in Boone, Iowa. Rebecca Metcalf will be at Hy-Vee Pharmacy, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Kara Matowski will be at Aurora St. Luke's Medical Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 
Valerie Meyer will be at Pharmacy Experiences Australia and be at various sites throughout Australia. Garrett Moorman will be at Gunderson Lutheran Medical Center in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Eddie Mueller will be at Memorial Medical Center, Springfield, Illinois. Samantha Murata will be at Hillside Healthcare Center, Belize, in Punta Gorda, Belize. Jimmy Wynn will be at Amida St. Joseph's Hospital, Chicago. Madison Nissen will be at Mercy One North Iowa Medical Center in Mason City, Iowa. Eileen O'Brien will be at Guide Point Pharmacy in Brainerd, Minnesota. Joshua Parado will be at the VA Central Iowa Health System Des Moines Division in Des Moines, Iowa. Krishna Patel will be at Anchorage Neighborhood Health Center in Anchorage, Alaska. Sharmi Patel will be at Jewel Osco, Carroll Stream, Illinois. Greta Peterson will be at Medicap Pharmacy, Douglas Avenue in Urbandale, Iowa. Lisa Pham will be at Hy-Vee Pharmacy, Fleur in Des Moines, Iowa. Gabe Pedraza will be at Buena Vista Regional Medical Center in Storm Lake, Iowa. Hudson Preeb will be at Amida St. Joseph Hospital, Chicago, Illinois. Drake Ryder will be at McDonough District Hospital in Macomb, Illinois. Becca Rizak will be at Hillside Healthcare Center in Punta Gorda, Belize. Emma Robas will be at Mary Greeley Medical Center in Ames, Iowa. Dylan Sirocco will be at Broadlands Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Matthew Schlott will be at Pharmacy Experiences Australia, also at various sites throughout Australia. Madison Schwartz will be at Fairview Pharmacy, New Brighton, Minnesota. Paige Schwebel will be at Medicap Pharmacy, Ankeny, Iowa. Aaron Simpson will be at Iowa Lutheran Behavioral and Mental Health Services in Des Moines, Iowa. Jennifer Song will be at Broadlands Medical Center in Des Moines, Iowa. Danielle Strzelecki will be at Zablocki VA Medical Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Brittany Sokowski will be at the Cancer Treatment Centers of America Midwestern Regional Medical Center in Zion, Illinois. Piper Swanson will be at Unity Point Clinic Blank Children's Endocrinology in Des Moines, Iowa. Justin Tabor will be at Iowa Lutheran Behavioral and Mental Health Services in Des Moines, Iowa. Rachel Tran will be at Blank's Children's Hospital in Des Moines. Bridget Tunick will be at Precision for Value in Chicago, Illinois. Josh Valerius will be at Regency Hospital Minneapolis in Golden Valley, Minnesota. C. Alex Wagner will be at CVS in Kansas City, Missouri. Chloe Wall will be at Adhere Health in Brentwood, Tennessee. Ian Watson will be at Iowa Lutheran Hospital in Des Moines, Iowa. Alex Weber will be at the VA Central Iowa Healthcare Systems in Des Moines, Iowa. Katie Wellington will be at the Women's and Infants Hospital of Rhode Island in Providence, Rhode Island. Kelly Jo Welter will be at Unity Point Clinic Internal Medicine Lakeview in West Des Moines, Iowa. Iris Winchislaw will be in Fairview Pharmacy, Apple Valley, Minnesota. Shania Wills will be at DOC, Department of Corrections, Central Correctional Pharmacy in Mitchellville, Iowa. And Courtney Young will be at Eagle Grove Pharmacy in Eagle Grove, Iowa.
congratulations to you as well. <laughs> Dean Chestnut, College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences faculty, I announce to you the 2020 candidates who will be completing the final chapter of their degree programs uh, throughout the 2019-2020 academic year. Please join me once again in congratulating all of them. Well, congratulations to all of you on your accomplishments thus far. We look forward to hearing about all of your experiences over the next year, especially after hearing where your first experience will be. To conclude our formal program, it is appropriate to share a quote from Dr. Lon Larson in remembrance of his passing away 10 years ago. Even though he is no longer with us, his legacy lives on through his words. Several years ago, he provided a presentation titled, Choose Your Attitude as part of the college's student leadership development series. In that presentation, Dr. Larson shared a number of lessons that he learned throughout his life, and he used the phrase, the barns burnt down, now I can see the moon. A quote from Masahide, a 17th century Japanese poet. Dr. Larson then went on to share what this means to him. Each of us gets to choose our own attitudes. We can worry about a future that may never arrive or relive the past. Or we can live in this moment and be thankful for it. We can become bitter over adversity and bad breaks, our burnt barns, or we can look for new moons or new opportunities. We can seek the courage to make our lives a blessing. We can focus on what we do or we can focus on how we do what we do. Do we act with integrity, authenticity, kindness, compassion, patience, justice? These questions should not be taken lightly. Our answers will affect our joy in living, and they will affect those with whom we interact. Our choice of attitudes influences their lives, and in turn, the world. The meaningfulness of our lives depends on our choice of attitudes. May we all choose wisely. As we reflect on those words from Dr. Larson, it's our hope for each of you in your futures that whether you face success or adversity, that you choose an attitude that helps you to find the new moons in your lives. This concludes our recognition and pinning ceremony. A reminder that those of you that won awards, we would ask that you come to the stage after um, we complete. In closing, I would like to say congratulations to all of you for reaching this point in your education. We know how much work has gone into bringing you to this evening. On behalf of the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences faculty and staff, we wish you all the best as you begin your education during this next year. Congratulations again.